right, so check it out. This is Jeff Ronnie from the Boa File channel. I'm going to do a little uh, tutorial about heating a Gravid Boa Constrictor. So I heat my cages either on the left or on the right of the cage with a heater on the bottom of the cage. Uh, now when cages are stacked, this cage has a shelf, which you can see up there. There is, above the cage, there is also heat radiating down from the ceiling of the cage. This particular female, which is a hypo labyrinth, which is bred by a call sunglow blood, so a call sun dragon, she favors sitting it directly on the heat. And there are a few important things about the heat. The heat needs to be fairly warm. That hot spot, depending on how you measure it with a thermostat, your thermostat might say, and it might be the proper temperature that you want, it may be 90, it may say 95, it may say 100, it may say 104. Thermostats are inherently inaccurate when it comes to measuring a temperature. So you need to use the best thermostat of all, and that is follow your female's behavior. So a gravid female, especially toward, well, the last three months of her gestation period in particular, with the exception be, maybe being the last week or so, will favor the heat a lot. Now, if a female is sitting on the heat constantly, your hot spot isn't warm enough. You need to have it warmer, because if it was so warm that she was able to achieve the body temperature that she wants... Uh, she would occasionally get off of the temp or off of the heat to regulate her own body temperature. If she's sitting on it constantly, she is indicating to you, this may not be warm enough. It might be just perfect. So I should back up. It might be perfect, but I can't judge perfection. She can. So I watch her behaviors. I like to have the female spend maybe 80% of her time, especially in the late afternoon, on the heat, and some of the time off of the heat. If she spends a lot of time off of the heat cruising around, that usually means she's looking for a warmer place to go to. Uh, if it's too hot, she just won't sit on it as much. She will thermoregulate. Sometimes she'll be on it, sometimes she'll be off. She just won't be on it very much if it's, quote-unquote, too hot. Now, by too hot, I mean unnecessarily warm not not so hot that it's going to hurt anything but warmer than it needs to be so in a perfect world if you had your female sitting on the heat about half of the time and off the heat half of the time everything's probably going to be fine you're going to get full-term babies no issues no yolk bellies if your female is on the heat 80 percent of the time and off 20 percent of the time ditto same scenario probably everything's going to be up fine if she's on the heat all the time, she might not be warm enough. Some females, when they're not warm enough, will cruise around a lot, but not all of them. So some females, when they're not warm enough, they'll just park on the heat in hopes that they're going to get enough heat to gestate those babies properly. Now, if they don't have enough heat, there are several things that can happen. You can have stillborn babies. Nobody wants stillborn babies. You can have babies born with disproportionately large bellies full of yolk, which there is a cure for that, which I wrote about almost 20 years ago in, a, ago in an article that I titled uh, Solidified Yolk Syndrome. I'll be doing a video on that as well. Because um, that is not, not necessarily an incurable problem when they're born with the big yellow, yellow or big uh, bellies full of yolk. Another thing that can happen is they can be born with underbites or congenital deformities, usually because of environmental factors, in particular, not being warm enough. So they can be born with an underbite. Sometimes they can be born with a cleft palate. Sometimes they're just general deformities. You'll have babies with deformities. If you have a disproportionately large number of slugs, all of those things are much more likely to happen, no matter how warm you keep it. Because the female, even if she's gestating properly, if there's a whole bunch of slugs in there, they're not able to get enough nourishment in the form of oxygen from the mom 
because it's disrupted by the neighboring slugs, which don't transfer oxygen to the babies. So, the moral of the story is, the boa knows best. I, I heat most of my cages, I don't have a thermometer, or I should see, say, I heat most of my cages without a thermometer in any of the cages. I mean, let me back up. I don't have a thermometer in a cage, not one. Not one thermometer in the cage. I don't need a thermometer. I have a thermostat, and I set the temperature on the thermostat so that the female is sitting on the heat most of the time and gets off of the heat some of the time. Then I know she's happy. If she's off the heat all the time, that usually means she's a slugger <laughs> or she's not gravid at all. Um, sometimes it can mean the hot spot is just too hot. It's just uncomfortably too hot. You know, if it's 110 degrees, they're probably never going to sit on it. They'll just get close to it and warm themselves by the heat radiating off of the warm floor, you know, next to them. But otherwise, you want them on the heat and off. Let her tell you the temperature that she desires. Pay attention to what she is telling you. You don't need a thermometer. Temp gun is helpful. Temp guns are also inherently inaccurate. So you can't go by a number. You can't go by a number on the thermostat. You can't go by a number on your temp gun. You have to go by what your female is telling you. She knows the best temp. Not me. Not you and your temp gun, no matter how fancy your temp gun is. Not you and your thermometer, no matter how fancy your thermometer is. Don't focus on a number. Focus on behavior. That is the Boophile tip for today regarding temperature and thermal regulation on gravid females. Don't forget, subscribe, hit that like button if you think this is brilliant and it'll help you in the future. Also, hit that notification bell so that every time I post a new video, you get notice of it. ASAP, you don't want to miss any of them. Hey, thank you much for watching. Stay tuned for whatever comes next. Coming back at you shortly.